Hey guys, and how's it going? Hey, we're going to continue on the 1986 Olds Cutlass Supreme Brome Edition that I grabbed out about, about a month ago, three weeks ago. And the first one, we got it kind of cleaned up, got it running. It actually seemed to run fairly decent. I think it sat for about five years or so. Uh, going through it, Brian grabbed it, VW 1967, went and took it and brought the paint back to life. So it does look much better than what it did, the moldiness that it was. And then uh, I came back, in the last video, we got the frame repair, got the gas tank out of it, looked into the oil leaks, found the... What I thought was the valve cover was leaking, I think it was leaking on the valve cover, popped that off, thought I had the wrong gaskets, but I had the right ones, it just uses less holes. I do not know my GM and Olds products, but anyway, so <laughs> that was taken care of. I actually put that valve cover back on. Uh, we put, picked it up in the air, looked underneath for more of an oil leak, and found it was missing a bolt in the timing cover. So I think that was the majority of it. Uh, we'll see. It is tagged. It is got, uh, it is got, it's got... It, it's gotten registered, so it is good to go take on the road so we can actually take this thing up on some uh, high-end speeds. Hopefully we come back, it is nice and dry underneath. If not, we'll take care of that too. But we ended up, it's still up in the air because it did not have a gas tank. The gas tank was leaking, somebody patched it in the past. I was waiting on that. And lo and behold, the gas tank came in. So that's the old one. Let's go open up the new one. Put them side by side, make sure that uh, they are apples and apples. If so, we put that in. And uh, let's get back to wrenching. Yeah, a little side by side. Looks decent. I think it was 170 delivered. Just kind of eyeballing all the dents. <laughs> all the little lumps in it where the straps go and everything. See if it kind of matches up. Looks pretty good. Looks, this one looks like everything is deeper. Even like the crater. Here for the hoses. It's a little more shallow on that one. Yeah, that, like that's more pronounced. And what do you want for 170 bucks, right? Looks like we got a, a dent right here too. We got a sending unit to put in it. Let's go grab that. So when I took the gas tank out, it had about seven gallons of gas in it and it was barely reading on the gas gauge. I think maybe this might be our chance we'll fudge it a little bit if we can. So we want, what do we want? We want to think there's more gas in the tank. We want to bend that down. Break it right off. Weird that it does that, huh? Let's see if that helps us a little bit more. We want. Yeah, we're about level, about level with the the pickup right now. Everything looks pretty clean. I don't see anything that we have to go deal with. It did come with a new seal. And ring. Let me go grab those. I like how the bag says suffocation risk. Not for children. Yeah, but you were almost five. I couldn't read that. <laughs> All right. So we got. That bolted on. Come on. Come on, Don't break. You want to rotate that to the middle. It's like that, I like that, like that.
I did mark it. I was smart enough to do that. You guys got it? Well, we definitely had gravity helping us. Taking it out. All right, going back in. I'm hoping that little trolley jack will kind of get us in, up into place. We gotta go that way, don't we? That exhaust is still hanging from the doing the frame repair. So I took a ratchet strap. Where are you? I took a ratchet strap and I kicked it that way. Let's see if we can run that up. Close enough to get the fuel lines on it anyway. See how this works. Let's see if we can get my hand squeezed up inside there. We could probably lower the car a little bit too yet on the air jack. So let me see if we can get those fuel lines on. So there was a little rubber, rubber plug that held these three organized. Where'd that go? This thing. I'm gonna say it went that and judging by the marks on the lines let me see it says just like that and just lays on top of the tank once the tank is in position get one strap bolted I gotta rearrange okay you can get her up in the, the gas door up behind the license plate And home you go. There, that was easy. Yeah, sure. Get five gallons of the good stuff. So there's supposed to be a way to wedge the gas cap to keep it. There it is. Let's see how much of this modern gas can does not want to leak. Drink up, little buddy. One of you would peek underneath, just make sure gas isn't pouring out the bottom. I really appreciate that before I commit to the whole five gallons. Got about four gallons in it. Let's go see what that does for us. Uh, on our gas gauge. So right now, it even 
without anything in it. Maybe it doesn't even work at all. There it goes. It's changing. <laughs> it's gotten worse. <laughs> like I said, it had about seven in it, and that's what it was showing in the reserve on seven. I guess we'll find out when we fill it up. Let's go give her a crank. See if the battery held. It's been about a week. Uh oh. <laughs> that might answer our question on the battery. On the charger. Going with jumper pack. Hmm. Should I have gas in the carb? I didn't drain the carb. I wonder if I have no spark. One more time. There it goes. I put some power steering fluid in it too. It was whining before it was low. Maybe what we'll do is we'll take the uh, cardboard that the gas tank came in. I'll rip that open. I'll slide it under the car. We'll let that sit. We'll let it warm up a little bit and see if any oil pisses out. So I do believe we developed a bit of an exhaust leak. Right there. I wonder if we can wiggle that pipe around a little bit and get the... I don't know, it's pretty black. It looks like he's been doing it for a while. Probably needs a donut. You think that even has a donut? I like to tighten up on that bowl. I'm afraid I'm going to snap it though. We can find a happy spot. I'll just stay down here and hold it forever. I'm gonna try putting a socket on them, but I don't want to bust them off. That one right there. I'm gonna try screwing with the hangers in the back, see if I can get the pipe to maybe lean a little bit differently than what it is. It might be just a tweak from the hangers. It wasn't loud before. How about that? There you go. Good as used. Let's go peek for oil leaks. I don't see anything on the cardboard yet. Looks pretty good. Yeah, I'm willing to bet that was our issue right there. I do have a new oil filter and oil for it. But I gotta run it, I wanna get it, let it get warm. How about we drop it on the ground, we take it for a little road test, and we'll bring it back in, we'll change oil. Like a plan? I like that plan. So I got a jumper pack, headlight, and yeah, it was a little bit of a stutter. I thought that would go away with the fuel. Boom, 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 boom. boom. Yeah. Would help I take the wheel chocks out. We're not going anywhere. <laughs> I put another five gallons, I could probably call it nine, and it's a little under half. At least it's working. I think it's a 17 gallon tank. So it should, it should really be up around half. Six. 
sometimes it'll run on all eight. You floor it, it definitely stutters like crazy. So I'm thinking it could be a, a plug, a wire, or a cap. I think it's gonna be along those lines. I don't really think it's carb related. I think it's just doesn't have good spark on one of the cylinders. It could be a lot of things, but I said we bring her back, put it up on the lift, check our oil leak, and uh, see if we can find our our miss. Other than that, it rides pretty good. The brakes are fine. It pulls a hair to the right, but not terrible. this side it's hard to say maybe one on each side <laughs> Right there, whatever it is. I'm gonna go get a string <laughs> and hang it, see what lines up to that. So I took a piece of pull chain and that's what's hanging. And if I follow that up, it goes right onto the edge of that cutoff exhaust, which I think was part of the emissions system. But I don't think that is, you know, it's not leaking out of the exhaust. I think it's coming from maybe a little higher above. I also see the the oil filter. Looks like it's having some oil running down the side of it. And possibly a little even higher. Might be the end of that valve cover. I was not crazy about having only five bolts in it. I don't know if you guys can see up any better than I can. Gotta go fuzzy on you. Yeah, up inside there. You gotta go take a peek. Hopefully it's the end of the valve cover just dripping down. That'd be good. I can live with that. Better than other places. I'll leave that cardboard set a little bit. See if any other drips show up. I think that in the front is just when the cardboard was getting put under there. Let's see, so we got to go 18 inches at 4 o'clock. So 18 inches at 4 o'clock will put us right about here. I don't see anything. That looks pretty dry. Yeah, I think it's just from the cardboard getting shoved underneath there. I would say right above and behind that spark plug wire right there, that bolt is definitely where it's leaking from. So I'm going to try tightening that down a little bit. Hopefully it didn't knock the gasket off when I was putting it in there. It was definitely a struggle. I did glue it to the valve cover before it went in, but possibly it did not um, stay tucked and is an issue. Or I just didn't get good enough tightness on that and that's my issue. Hopefully it's the second of the two. Well, I wouldn't say it was loose. I did crank down on it more. 
but it felt pretty good like what you would do on a valve cover but i probably want a good and another turn and a half all the way around i have a feeling i probably knocked that gasket out of there but good thing i got two i didn't do the other side yet so <laughs> We'll leave that side alone because uh, I think our leak is just on this side. I think I created it. I think the leak I, originally was the timing cover, which we found and took care of, and then me changing the valve cover gasket. It was glued on before. It had no gasket in it, and now I put a gasket in it, and it only has five bolts out of the, I think, eight or ten that it possibly could have. It, uh, I didn't design it. It just is what it is. Let's see if we can see it. Cap looks pretty good. I do not see anything. It's got a little bit of, you know, crap coming off the center. The coil's mounted right in the middle of it. I do not see any cracks. I don't see any moisture. I don't see any little, you know, call it track marks. You know, little arcs kind of going across. Calls them a skip rotor. Mm. Mm, dirty, but I don't see anything again being an issue with that. I say we probably should go for plugs and wires first. We'll try it, fire it up, and see if that cures our ailment. But that's going to be on another day. So I'll bring you back when that day comes because right now it's about midnight. Hey guys, it's the next day. I actually went out looking for a wire set. Would you believe? Uh, the local park shops did not have one in stock and they could have it for me tomorrow. Today is Sunday. So uh, I'm going to do something to try to find out what cylinder is dead and I'll explain it because it's going to be kind of loud to go and do that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a test light, a real test light, I'm going to ground one end of it to the body and I'm going to go around a distributor cap on each wire and I'm going to kind of stab into each one. And what that does, it just grounds out each cylinder. It's not going to zap you. It's not going to burn up the test light or anything, but it's just going to kill each cylinder. And I'm going to listen to see if each cylinder, if you hear a difference in the engine and each cylinder drop out. And the one or two that doesn't drop out, those are going to be the cylinders that are going to be suspect that are not firing. And then we can, you know, search into the, is the plug wire bad to plug? Does it have not, no compression in that cylinder? Is the cam not doing anything? And we can kind of go chase it further that way. So uh, without further ado, we get you set up, get the car warmed up again, and see if we can figure that out. So number three cylinder doesn't make any difference. I ground that cylinder out and you'll hear any difference in the rumbling of it. So that's our suspect one. Let's go look in it a little further. Here's that wire again on number three. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, that would definitely cause an issue. Is there even the metal thing in it? Let's go hit it with a stabber. Yeah, that wire just burned right off. It's in there. I know I saw a rust down on the inside of it, but I didn't expect to see it literally burned off the end of it. Yeah. 
I think I might have a repair kit actually. Oh, a spark plug wire repair kit. It looks like it was down in there. Maybe at some point it's fast when somebody did plugs, they, they pulled it out of there. And the rust is what kind of has me too. I wonder maybe if all the arcing caused it to corrode like that. Let's we'll see what I got. We can probably go cut this. Do I have enough room? hiding on me yeah let's go uh we'll start off with doing that get back to some fresh stuff and see if we can go strip that back is there even an end in that or is that cooked away wish i had another wire set just to throw one wire in it but i don't yeah it's a little bit better I think it's that, uh, uh, what do you call that core? It's the name of the, the type of core that's in it. It's like a fiber, not a wire. All right, I'm gonna go see if I can find something. We're gonna go strip the end of that back. Hopefully we can kind of like fold it over, get a new metal barrel on it, put it back on there, see if we get sparks. See if that cylinder returns. Part of my stash. Spark plug repair. You know how I haven't used it in a while? It's buried down low. You pull one out and everything else settles down. <laughs> it's down in the basement. And of course, every single one of them does a 90. Like you put the wire in there, that would pierce into the center of it, and then you'd crimp these walls over on it. I guess we could probably put one on. Again, I'm going to grab a new wire set. We're just trying to you know, determine. Actually, I wonder if I could just bend it straight. Let me do that. Crimp it on the end, just stick it straight on the plug. Let's go see that lope went away. Hopefully. It does sound much better. Let's go see if we can short that out and see if that cylinder will drop out. Here's the test light. <laughs> I gotta shut it off. Test lights. Down under the alternator pulley. That's not a good place for it. <laughs> Let me go hook that back up again. We'll try it again. Definitely sounds better. Well, I want to go grab lunch anyway. I'm going to go pop the air cleaner assembly back on there and we'll go take a little road trip and uh, see how it is under, under a load. Mm, the exhaust sounds better. It's still fluttering once in a while. But it's 
not like it was. I need to keep your head pointed low. See how she does turn onto the main road. That sounds much better. No miss now. I wouldn't exactly say it's a powerhouse, but not bad. like riding around in your sofa. It's very comfortable. And it pulls a little to the right. I go for two tires. A little bit of a shimmy. If you get to like 55 or so, you can feel a little bit of a vibration in it. Probably front end alignment wouldn't hurt. It feels like the tires are worn on the, I think it was the outside edge. Plus I'm sure there probably eight to ten years old too and I think tires got about ten years in them before the rubber in them starts going definitely a nice cruiser it could use uh, definitely a lower rear end gear ratio it's geared real tall slow her down to about 30 and boot it to it. It just... I mean, it's not bad for what it is. I would compare it to a modern four-cylinder. <laughs> well, it was the 80s. I think this thing's like a 150 horsepower. Maybe 151 because it's got dual exhaust now. Everything else seems pretty decent. The brakes are good. Uh, transmission seems like it shifts fine. The radio works decent. Of course, I can't show you that. Uh, AC needs a charge, but the heat works. It doesn't seem like it's overheating. All the gauges work. I still have to swap. Uh, it needs high beams. I think they're both burned out. But it came with a set of headlights. I have a feeling that's what they're for. The question is, can it do a decent burnout? Let's go find out. Well, after that beat run, I don't see it actively dripping on the floor anymore. So tightening up the valve cover a little more seems pretty good. I want to do a fluid change. So I guess I'm going to get rid of the old goo and put in some new goo.
Yeah, well, how long are you? Yeah, I would say she was a, a tad overdue for that. This thing was a diesel. <laughs> so nasty. You know, I'm gonna drop that sucker and it's gonna splash all over me. That's just how I roll. And that way, if it happens, and I set it, you don't have to get as mad. Almost. <laughs> <laughs> Out with the old. Clean up that my mating surface a little. All right, put a little bit of a little dab of oil on the O-ring that's on there. What's that string hanging? I don't want that. Better and I, I dated and put the mileage on that so the next guy goes when was when yeah so I think the oil leak is pretty well dried up if not it's just a a slight drip again everything's just so wet over there so I ran it I probably put 15 miles on it like beater miles getting on it got it nice and hot so whatever's gonna leak is gonna leak and I came back and I parked it it was a couple of drips but I think it might be from old stuff still just coming running down the side of the block there I'm gonna do the same after the oil change I'm gonna run her a little bit a couple things I, I noticed the I don't think the choke works I don't think it comes on it starts easy but in cold weather it's gonna be an issue AC doesn't have a charge again tires uh, I think I have a trade going on on this so the new owner can have fun probably burning off the old tires and I would probably suggest putting some new ones on it or just run run what you got that'll be on him or her I'm not saying that I'm not sure if I'm gonna do any more videos on this car possibly a trade and then you might see it for there and it might have a life going on after that to the new owner let's see and again i may run it around for about a month just having some fun with it but it seems pretty decent like i said this trans shifts fine uh there's no funky noises stereo is decent it rides quiet other than you know a little bit of tire vibration at about 55. And it is a 307. Uh, this is Sunday. The past video just came out a couple hours ago. And the comments are going back and forth that the oil fill on a Chevy motor is on the valve covers. And Olds would have this de dedicated one going down into it. I think you're done watching me fill this with oil. <laughs> I'll bring you back in a minute. Where's the stick? Right to the fall. Well, I want to get rid of some of that shimmy. I'm going to go check the tires. I left the weather weights are already on them. On them, we'll let it spin up, do its thing. And what we got on the first one? 
That one is actually pretty good. Quarter of an ounce right there. We'll take care of that one. We're going to do all four, see if we can find one that's really out. Plus, I'm going to put the front on the back, back on the front. Wheel spacers? What's up with that? I wonder if the rim hits the, uh, the caliper. I'm going to try putting it on without it, see how it does. Looks like it clears everything. I'll leave those spacers out of there. The lower tie rod looks close, but yeah, that's probably what they we're going for. Yeah, there's an air gap there. I'm going to try without it. We hear some scraping. And uh, maybe that's why they did it. But uh, they generally do not help front end uh, <laughs> issues at all. Passenger side front. <laughs> that one's shaking the whole machine. That one's gonna be a good one. Yep, that'll make a little bit of a wobble on the front end. <laughs> I took the weights off to see what it what it's at now. Still pretty good. Still shaking. Pretty much the same. Driver's side front, the weight's still on it. Not too bad. Just had a couple of halves on that one, I was able to get that one right in. Driver's side rear, the weight's still on it. Eh, not too bad neither. That one was way out there. The one with the 275. I think that was our issue. And perfect score. Zero, zero. Road test again. Unfortunately, I think we're going to be driving into the sun. But this is a, a higher speed road. Apologize in advance. Here we can put that sun visor down and put you up there. There you go. How's something like that? Feel that right rear tire that's the one that was on the front that was bad let go of it, it does pull a hair still to the right not bad though the shimmy is much better i'd just say it probably needs two good tires on the back at minimum and then make the one of the better of the two the spare if you can find the same raised white letter for the look of it or whatever I think we're just gonna run it the way it is for now it's more than bearable before it was, it was literally like shaking the seat and now you can essentially let go of the wheel and you get a good three seconds before it wants to uh, curve off to the right <laughs> I'm happy with that Like it never happened.
Well guys, we're about a mile down a trail. Some place that's on the quiet side. We'll do our final shot. <laughs> Wanted to see how it was off-road. <laughs> Does pretty good. I didn't hit anything. Uh, it came out pretty good. It's uh, swapped the tires around front to rear. That helped with the shake going down the road. It does need tires. It still needs to be addressed. Uh, but the next owner can go deal with that. Change the fluids in it. A uh, new set of wires got put on it. Chased some lights that were out of it. Put a couple of headlights in it. Side marker light. So all everything works that it should uh, be able to get a sticker for it for inspection. Should be just fine. The radio is fine. Brake lights, directionals. Even when you open the trunk, the light comes on inside the trunk. So it's... Uh, Pretty complete. Touched up the white paint some here and there. They had some you know, little blemishes that hit with a paint stick and then I blew in some white paint. I don't know if you remember up on the roof here. Had a bunch of blisters going down the side of it. Kind of masked that off and cleaned that up. Came out good too. Final top still needs to be addressed, but uh, that could be the next person can go take care of that. I'm gonna leave it like it is for now. And it's probably be the last video on it. I do have a trade. I believe happening for the car so you might see one more time as far as you know what i swap it out for but uh, this is going to be it for me we're going to run around for about another three weeks or so before that happens it's actually a very nice car to drive it's very um uh, soft it's probably the best way to put it some people saying it's driving around on your your couch it's uh, a good analogy because that's pretty much how it does feel it's very comfortable to go drive about 55 60 you do get a, a bit of a vibration from the uh you know tires that have gone square for sitting five years in one spot it's, uh, raised white leather tires are hard to come by. It's not like it used to be. It used to be able to get them really easy. Not so much anymore. I like that look. I pretty much put that on everything I have. Except for like the uh, air cool VWs. But all the muscle cars. Has to have raised white leather tires. So that's it guys. It came out pretty good. I'm happy with it. It seems to run fine. It uh, doesn't overheat. Doesn't No funky noises. You know, It just does what it's supposed to do. Uh, I've never owned a... Uh, I haven't owned much of a GM products at all, but other than the fact that the engine bay looks like um, something a beaver would make for a dam <laughs> for all the hoses and wires, uh, the rest of the car is quite decent. And parts are easy to come by too and cheap, not very expensive. Hey right, guys, that's it. I'm going to go sign off. I want to thank you all for hanging out with me and uh, doing a little bit of wrenching on this one and bringing this one back to life and getting around the road. Got another one saved. Till then, see you soon. Bye. And let's go see what we got. It's been sitting out in the weather for a little while. The paint's really got a bunch of, I don't know if it's showing up, but a bunch of black. Probably molds are just dirt. It's an 1886 Olds Cutlass. Supreme Chrome edition. Missing some chrome pieces. Keys are supposed to be in the glove box. Glove box ashtray. Oof. And I do not think it runs. I'd have to go ding ding, but that's about it. So we'll get to do a cold start. I'm not sure how long it's been sitting. No inspection sticker on it. I think it's been a while. I understand it needs a gas tank. Uh, something in the rear is leaking. It's got a nice interior. The seats are nice. It smells a little bit like the American Legion. But it doesn't smell like mice. That's a good sign. Uh, let's see what it's got under the hood. Door panels look good. A little rust on the bottom of the fender. The door, rather. I don't think it's ever been painted. So whatever we see is what it has. It's got the performance air cleaner on it. <laughs> and we got some shells and whatnot down in the intake manifold. So it's got, yeah, it's got, <laughs> it's got some critters living in it. It looks pretty complete. 
Well, I see we go pop it in neutral, get the trailer set up, winch that puppy on, and go home where it's a little more comfortable to film and work on it.